then explains the code. The sport of ice hockey is the only sport on the planet that tolerates fighting and retribution, even though their rules prohibit doing so. Referees will penalize players for breaking the rules, but sometimes the players take matters into their own hands. There are unwritten rules that govern how players should behave that you won't find in any rule book. And there are even specific players on hockey teams whose sole job it is to police the game accordingly. These are the enforcers, otherwise known as goons, tough guys, fighters or cops. And whilst it's their sole job to police the game, the code applies to every player on the ice. These unwritten rules are based on mutual respect for your opponents and protecting your teammates. This is the code. The first rule of the code is that they do not talk about the code. Whilst these rules exist amongst players, there is no official record of the rules of the code, except for this video. And you won't find these in any official rule book. The NHL or International Ice Hockey Federation will always officially decline to comment about any code. This is because they don't want to officially admit that their sport that they govern isn't completely under their control. The players police the game as much as the referees do, and sometimes they police it a little too much. Rule number two, if you do something bad, expect to pay the price. Let's say that you spitefully whack your opponent with a stick, and for some reason, the referees and linesmen completely missed it. No penalty is called against you, and you seemingly get away with it. I guarantee that the other team saw it, and they'll be gunning for you to avenge your crimes. There is now a giant bullseye on your back, with members of the opposing team looking to return the favor, one way or another. And if you manage to avoid punishment until the end of the game, just wait until you play them again. I guarantee they won't have forgotten. Your crime is not transient and they won't stop headhunting you until you have paid the price. Rule number three, you do not target stars. The best players on most teams are the star players that score goals and assists. There is an unwritten gentleman's agreement that stipulates that if you don't hit our star players, we won't hit yours. Let the stars score the goals and let everyone else do their respective jobs. Should you unfairly target a star player, expect swift retribution as per rule number two. Rule number four, ignore rule three if that star breaks rule two. Sidney Crosby, a generational player that could score goals at will and will one day be enshrined into the Hockey Hall of Fame. A talent so immense that he doesn't need to dive, take cheap shots or hit anybody when they're down. But he does it anyway. This is totally unacceptable. Once you are a star player that resorts to these tactics, rule number three no longer applies and you'll have a bullseye on your back just like everyone else. Rule number five, no sucker punches. There is a proper decorum to challenge someone to a fight. However, sucker punching someone, i.e. punching them when they're down or not looking, is an unacceptable way of doing so. This is cowardly and blind signing someone like this will result in the opposing team taking note. Expect swift retribution as per rule number two. Lots of it. Rule number six, pick on someone your own size or bigger. Unless they instigate it, it is not acceptable to pick on someone who is significantly smaller than you, especially if they're skilled players that do not fight. The rule is simple, pick on someone the same size or bigger. Constantly picking on a smaller opponent will result in someone significantly bigger coming after you. Rule number seven, verbally or physically agree. To challenge someone to a fight, it's important to stand square onto your opponent. Gesture with the hands, the helmet, or start shaking off your gloves. Dropping the stick is a clear indication that you want to throw down. It's fair to bait them physically or verbally, but if you're wearing a cage or full visor, it's proper etiquette to remove that prior to fighting your opponent. Fighting with a half visor may be morally acceptable in some, but not all, leagues. Rule number eight, don't back down. When challenged to a fight, especially if you have been guilty of a crime committed on the ice, it is seen as cowardly if you do not accept the challenge. Backing down is not cool. 
you will not receive any brownie points with your teammates, and expect some form of retribution sometime during the game, legal or not. Rule number 9. You do not turtle. Once you have engaged in a fight, it is not acceptable to turtle, i.e. curl up in a ball to avoid punches. This is seen as cowardly. You have accepted the challenge to fight, and fight you must. Rule number 10. It is acceptable to premeditate fights. It is deemed courteous to politely ask a player if he wants to fight. Exhibit A, Georges Larocque. You want to? Okay. Squirrel? Okay, good luck, man. This is the gentlemanly way of instigating a fight and a fine example of good code etiquette. If a premeditated challenge is accepted, the gloves must come off and helmet visors removed before you fight. Respected enforcers will actually remove their helmets completely and roll up their sleeves. This is to protect their opponent's hands as well as their own. This is the ultimate mark of respect. Rule number 11. You do not punch someone lying down. Once the fight has reached the ground, and one or both combatants have hit the ice, you must stop immediately. They are in a defenseless position, it is dishonorable to hit someone when they're down, especially if they can't defend themselves. The punishment and retaliation for breaking this rule is severe. Rule number 12. You do not fight goalies unless you are a goalie or they instigate it. Goalies, like stars, have a job to do, and it doesn't involve fighting. Unless they challenge you and it's obvious that they're doing so, leave them well alone. That said, it is acceptable for both goalies to fight each other, even if no incident has happened between them. Rule number 13. Brawling is fair game. It is perfectly acceptable to retaliate to multiple infractions made by both sides. If every player steps in at once, it's fair game to challenge someone completely unrelated to the original altercation and fight with them. This is to prevent the opposing player from applying damage to your teammates and to temporarily eliminate them from the game by getting them, and yourself, sent to the penalty box. Rule number 14. Be wary of pests. A pest is a player whose sole job it is to antagonize and annoy you and your teammates in order to draw penalties. They will resort to anything from verbal abuse to underhand tactics to licking your face. They will most likely challenge you to a fight and then proceed to run away, leaving you with an instigator penalty. Be cautious when you challenge them to a fight, because that's exactly what they want you to do. Rule number 15. The Golden Rule. You stand up for your teammates, whether it's your job or not. Whether you're an enforcer or not, if you are on the ice and foul play happens, you are expected to stand up for your teammates, regardless of size, weight or star power. These players will stand up for you, through thick and through thin, and it is seen as cowardly to not return the favour. Teammates will notice if you don't have their back, so be wary because one day, it might be you that needs the help. The most interesting thing is that the code is open to interpretation. No two players have the exact same interpretation of the code. But in general, these are the rules that ice hockey players live and die by, even if they're not written down. When regular rules aren't enforced properly, the code dictates how justice is served. In conclusion, there are some amazingly talented players in the sport of ice hockey, and there are people whose job it is to protect them. These men and women have given up being stars themselves, taken lower paychecks, significantly shortened their own careers, and risked their lives and future health, all to protect their teammates when the rules of the game fail to do so. These are noble warriors who will fight with honor and within the unwritten rules of the game. They deserve our absolute respect because they are the enforcers of the code. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm this close to over 100,000 subscribers, so if you haven't already, like, share and subscribe, please share and subscribe, and help me get over that 100k mark. And if you already are a subscriber, let me know in the comment section below what you think of this video. Did I miss out various rules? Do you think I got any of them wrong? And also, 
let me know which hockey fights you thought was the best ever. Write it down in the comment section below and hopefully we'll see you in the next episode.